Hello everybody. It is uh, Sam again, aka The Train. Pimpin' glimpin' dimpin' May. Ma, cockers and doggers and bloggers. <laughs> so it's been about a month. I think actually a little more than a month since the uh, last update I did on the layout. And I have made some uh, stellar progress once again. So let's jump right on in. So um, I'm going to try and move a little slower today with the camera and not pan around as much. Um, and we will uh, hopefully have some better results for our viewers' viewing pleasures. So most of the work has started uh, over on the expansion of the layout as far as what I've been up to recently. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start over here. So uh, coal mine area, nothing's really changed over here. Little mountainy passing running by scene, nothing changed. Lumber mill area, you guys have seen all this. The buildings are all tucked away right now. So go watch previous videos. So we'll jump in here. So I put in a lot of this foam right here. And then more of this foam. We'll get over here in a second. Um, most of this was here, but I've added more over here all this weekend. And I've started to taper this. It'll be a gradual slope down to, you know, this will be the vanishing point. And it'll come up just very gradually. I also have little pieces of phasia that I cut that'll go right up against this, which you can see is flat. So it'll match this black and only be about an inch and a half high. And that'll, you know, add a lot of 3D to this scene. So you'll be looking over or down into the lumber valley, uh, whatever you want to call it. Then same thing over here. Uh, the, the portals come out, inner main line goes over back to the coal area, outer main, the Y. So I guess it's a it's a Y, even though it goes to two tracks instead of one. Um, I have glued down track up to here. Um, and I actually made my bridge section pieces of track perfectly measured out. So they both slot into bridge one and bridge two perfectly. Um, so like I said, I filled in, this section was already here foam wise, I filled in here and here and started to lightly taper it so that it'll all kind of flow down this way downhill and then you know a little bit over this way it becomes more broad it'll be a nice valley you know leading into the bridge section which will be a river underneath I thought so eventually once I put the water and river in there I still need a piece of backdrop to match these going across here and then it'll line up with that one so this will obviously, you know, and it'll taper down along. I even thought to have this become more of a deep valley and eventually I'll taper this down too to match the ground level for the river. Maybe even cutting out this section here, the wood base, and making it more of like a U, putting in, make it go even deeper than it already is. Because if you can see here, I have this whole section. This is a base right now, so I can even almost do a little something like that all the way across you know go even further down make it more pronounced give it an even more 3d volume effect not really sure if i'm going to or not but so from this angle a lot of progress i got a lot of this foam glued down yesterday did a lot of the initial carving today and then same thing over here added a few more pieces onto this side started tapering it down it's going to be a lot more gradual and this side, there'll be one side will be steeper than the other, probably here, but it'll be very gradual. Then same thing over here. Um, I know this is very canyon-like right now, but I'm gonna have this taper. It's more of just like a rolling hillside that they kind of disappear in opposite directions. Carve all this down. Same thing over here. It'll be similar to over here. Just kind of roll a little bit, and then into the town scene, which we'll get to. So. Um, also, I will get to this backdrop area in a second. Um, so that's kind of that. So again, I'm trying to move slower with the camera. Um, I don't want to use a tripod and fix it. And I don't really need to sit down and edit these videos and chop up clips. I just want it to be like a diary entry, so to speak. So I'm trying to move slower with the camera work. So moving into the town scene. So this track is all glued down. Everything on this side of the layout has all been glued, the yards, the industries, 
and it's glued up to here. Like I said, I've made my bridge pieces of track perfect so I could slot them in. And then I've glued down up to here. And then everything from here all the way over the outer main, which comes around the expansion, is glued down to here. It's all glued down. Um, and then I got my little town spur lead all glued down as well. So starting over here, we're going to have um, some Main Street action going across. Just for reference, these buildings are on here right now because they're not permanent. But we're going to have the street come in here, go cr double crossing here. There's going to be buildings, you know, right along this. You'll have to see it with them there. Um, and then also, so it'll come to like a T right here. So it'll go this way and come up here where the road is and go left or right. So you have buildings here. I have a lot of building flats now that will be along the back. So it'll make the scene very 3D. Um, so this first industry right here is a little mill. Take one or two hoppers, glued down, nothing special. You know, have the little parking lot and stuff over here off the road. Put this back over here for context. Then we have the, have the little lead for an industry right here. Take a box car or two. I have a few other flats I might flip around, but then we have our long town runaround track. Well, I guess it's just part of the lead, but it has a nice runaround. So that all these industries, I might put one more flat industry coming off down this way over here. Um, so the runaround will be nice for shunting cars, bringing in a local or whatever, so to speak. Um, this track right here, scrap track, I think I'm gonna have, you know, the little X's made of ties going here and then the rest of this siding cut in the track, very overgrown and bushed, weedy, all that stuff. So I think that could be cool. And then I haven't connected, so this is as far as everything's glued down, it's all powered and wired, everything's good to go. So let me get down here and show you. So like I said, so the lead comes off there. You got the service industry there, the little mill, and then the building flat that'll be serviced. Maybe do one more, the abandoned, and then the, the long lead has the nice runaround in there. And then, you know, Main Street will be in front of it. The buildings are all just there for reference right now. And you know, the street will, like I said, run down to there and do a T just past. So, um, and then I will have, the lead come out there'll be a switch that connects to these double crossing across main street i'll have another little piece of main streets area town scene right here we'll have our two industries at our service there the crossing will look cool not sure what i'm going to do with this area specifically yet um, so it'll be a switch right here that comes down and attaches there and then i think i'm going to have one more little bigger industry scene here you saw that one factory building I have. I might have a track going into it, then a couple storage or shunting, whatever sidings on the side of it, I'm not sure. Um, this is all right here just for reference. And like I said, I have building flats and the 3D element of the flats behind the buildings I have will fill it out. I have a ton more stuff. It's all packed away right now back there because I was doing foam work and carving, so up until about an hour ago when I got finished vacuuming, the layout was a mess, which is fine. I always clean up after I use pretty much everything. I put the tools back away, I vacuum and sweep up. So when I come back to work again, uh, everything is clean. So that's that. So I don't know if you noticed where this piece of wood is. It runs all the way from here back over to this corner. There used to be a piece of foam, this pink foam, two inches high that ran along the back. And that was gonna be my divider for the rear line of the outer loop. As you can see, the Y here. So it's an extension of the outer loop. The Y comes, this side goes through Main Street you just saw, and this side will go around the back, hidden behind here. And I talked about this idea in the past, but now it's come to life. I have slotted in this backdrop. It's about seven inches high. I'm gonna paint it all black, put the building flats up against it. I'm going to try and hide it all into this corner as best I can. Like I said, this will all be more broad. So I know it's bulky right now, but I just put all this in yesterday. haven't tapered it much. I did mess around with painting a little bit just to see if I liked it. Uh, again, I'm trying to move slow. Uh, 
And then down here too, like I said, it's glued up to here. Um, I have the track measured out to slot in here perfectly. But there'll be this little tunnel. So I'd showed you this idea. So along the back of the layout or the front, depending who you ask, while you're sitting over here on the couches or watching TV or if I'm just deciding to run a train, um, it's long portholes that I cut into these pieces of wood. So as the train comes through here, and I'm gonna hide all that better so it's like a black, it's all just gonna be painted black, the backdrop in here. Um, and I, that's why I painted it already, but I'm doing some sanding and some patching just to make it look perfectly flat and uniform. So it'll all be black where it comes in, run along black background, black base. So you're just gonna see the train coming along and then a little gap where the supports are and the legs change. Same thing over here. And then over here too, I added this piece. And like I said before, I just need one more section of backdrop, fascia, whatever you wanna call it, to fit into all this, smooth all that out nice, and then dip down for the river. Um, but as you could see, and as I showed you from there, I need to make it all fit into here. So the outer main line, the inner main line, like I said, they split off. And the inner main, or the outer main, I'm sorry, will run around back over here. So my two challenges right now, um, and then I'll paint it all black once I'm done, is making it nice and smooth, making the windows perfect. You can see I've been doing some sanding and patching because the cuts were a little rough, but I can fix them and I have a lot. So, And then I'll paint everything inside of it black so you just see the tr train run by. Um, so the two windows where the turns come in are a challenge. And then hiding it from this angle is not a challenge. I'm going to paint it black and put my backdrops and buildings and stuff so you won't even know it's there. In theory, the foreground will be, you know, all this stuff. And then there'll be buildings in front of it too, in conclusion or in conjunction with the trains. So you won't even know it's there. And then I don't know what to do about a roof for it because I want it to be enclosed. Even if there's a derail, I can access it, the, well, of course, access it the entire way. So I'm thinking cutting length of wood, uh, whatever, two and a half inches wide, and just running it along the back of that. So it'll be a roof, you know, like a roof going across it, but there'll still be a little bit of height from this backdrop. So, you know, tall, you can't see the, the roof behind it, but then when you look at it from this angle, you know, there'll be just that little bit of black back there, which I don't mind. I still have to mess with it, but so like I said, I gotta hide it here. And I think I might just be able to snake by and have the track just look like it's running around these buildings. I'm not sure yet. So I'm taking it slow, a little bit at a time. Hide it down here too. Can probably blend it in with this mountain a little bit. I don't really want to put a tunnel portal here. I might have to. Um, I'm seeing what I can kind of get away with as far as like the little valley area. Like I said, I'm going to taper this down and maybe just have it disappear. I'm not sure. Um, it's two completely separate scenes and ideas, although it all flows into one. So that makes it a bit of a challenge too. But so, you know, the bridge scene has gotten a lot of work done. It's all starting to flow together more. Um, you know, Main Street in the town, like I said, buildings facing that way, I think they're gonna look cool. Um, you know, so that's kind of it. I wanted this video to be under 10 minutes, but we're almost at the 14 minute mark, so. So Main Street will be nice and easy, fill all that in, you know, put some cool stuff. I have a ton of buildings too. One day I'll do a video when I have everything that I'm going to put on it out. You've seen the mine and the wood lumber mill area, but I don't like keeping 200 things on the lab that are not ready to be there permanently because then i got to remove them every time I want to do something. So, um, so I think it's taken shape really well. I had no idea how this idea was gonna take shape. I knew in my head I could do it. I'm not a carpenter. I'm a modeler whose skills have progressed and gotten better since day one. Go watch the first video of my first ever layout, 2012 or 13. And I've been uh, modeling and railroading before that, but when you're talking 15 years of experience leading up to now, you can see I started to paint a little bit and experiment. So this idea was a huge accomplishment for me. I don't believe I've seen anybody else do it. I've seen similar ideas where you can see the train running by and I do have portholes myself for access for derails along the back of all this here, 
here, here, here, and I need to put one more here, potentially, probably not though. So the porthole idea for derails is not a new idea, but as far as I wanted aphasia here, because I wanted this to all be enclosed in the horseshoe, so this be the back of the layout from the viewpoint in here. And um, I have my little living room sports watching area over here. I'm sitting there thinking, I don't want to just stare at black plain phasia the whole time. And I also need to have portholes to access in case of derailments because I knew things were going to be hidden back here. So what I originally planned to do was cut little portholes and put tiny hinges so I could like lift the doors up in two or three or four spots along here. And then I decided why not just do this. It popped in my head. I bought the wood. I wasted a couple pieces of wood trial and error. But I think it's going to look really cool. So like I said, it'll all be black. And then you'll just be able to see the train going by. And then come back out on its way. You know. So that's kind of it for now. This is the Thanksgiving update. Winter is uh, almost here. It's November 21st or 2nd today. Um, and as you can see in the past two updates, so about five weeks, six weeks apart, tons of progress has been made. Um, I've been looking up painting and ground cover technique techniques now because that would be the next logical step. Um, I'm very, very, maybe 90% close and almost done putting the foam in where it needs to go. And then I'm going to spend a whole weekend finishing and carving the rest of this because spending an hour carving and vacuuming it up like I did today. Um, as a pain, I planned not to ever do that again and just finish it all at once, but I wanted to start getting looks of this area so my brain can process how I want to finish them off with the carving before I paint and ground cover. So that's all on the horizon. I'm very happy with how things are turning out. Um, and I guess that's kind of it. Tips or tricks you have for me, Tony Hawk style, let me know. If you like what you see, let me know. If I could do something better, let me know. If you think I'm an idiot, let me know. I don't really mind. I, criticism, good or bad, is only going to help me. Or anyone, I hope. You don't have to be a dick, but you can tell me what I'm doing right or wrong in your eyes and I'll consider it. Um, so, one good thing about 2020 is that my layout doubled in size. And uh, a lot of cool stuff has come of it. So, I know things are still looking rough, but I've said it before. I will say it again and continue to take my time. Work as slow as I want. When I get a good idea like this, I don't just start hacking away. I sit on it, uh, make designs. You know, I'm not no scientist, but I'm not just gonna be like, I want portholes, and then go to town. You know, I'm gonna wait a little bit, and then uh, good things happen. And there's a lot of ideas I've had, like those portholes, that I thought were good ideas that were not, and I'm glad I did not, and I'm also glad I didn't implement them and then have to rip them out. Because what you're looking at now is all first try stuff, I knew I wanted to do it, planned it out, decided to do it, and I didn't have to fix or rip anything up like on my old layout, which was basically just a war zone of failed and retried and eventually achieved projects that looked two thirds as good as they should because I did not know what I was doing or take the time the first time. So coming along, uh, I know people look at a blank canvas similar to this. It's not a blank canvas, but you know what I mean? There's a lot going on. But it's actually a lot further along than it looks to be. And that's a big, big thing with railroading. We all know how we want it to be, how we want it to look. Getting it to that point is a different story, but you know, I think any of us railroaders know that uh, we are our best friends and worst enemies and biggest critics when it comes to our own projects. So keep that in mind and have fun. So the train may have a happy Thanksgiving. Like I said, I will keep trying to get a video out per month. It's Thanksgiving now. I'll try to get another one out right before Christmas. Then we'll start the new year. So at least one more video this year. I promise you that. I'm always within, I say once a month and it's always once every four or five weeks. So I just want to do videos when there's a lot to report. I'm making these videos so I can look back on my progress and skills and all that too. And I know my videos have helped a lot of people. I appreciate everyone in the Facebook groups who have helped me. And uh, that's about it. So... The train main wishes you happy holidays. Stay safe. And uh, the train main, my little out.